Let's compare SW271 with the SW271C. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. With BenQ launching SW271C, we're probably wondering which display to get, especially if we're considering a 27-inch 4K artwork calibrated display. There are many changes and improvement under the hood in this new SW271 that culminate together in a more color accurate panel compared to the one that have come before it. It is the upgrade to the SW271 and as of this filming BenQ is keeping both of these displays in the lineup, giving us Creative Pro the option to choose the panel with the feature set that best matches with our creative workflow and budgetary needs. The SW display line have always been known as a photographer display and this new one is no different. There are new photo features in this display and what BenQ have also done with the recent SW releases is that they have gone in and added more pro video features and they have also done it in this new SW271C. Let's talk about the setup that I have behind me. This is the SW271 and this is the SW271C, the upgrade to this model. Both of these display is linked up to my Mac mini with Apple Silicon M1 processor and they're out of the box, they're running 4K60 without any issues at all. Palette Master Element, the program that BenQ have developed to run a hardware calibration on these display, has yet to be released for the M1 processor. However, that's coming soon. So if you're watching this video in the future, you'll be able to calibrate your SW display in a true hardware calibration mode without any issues at all. If you're running on an Intel Mac or a PC, then the software is already compatible with your system and you can already do a hardware calibration. No issues there. One of the things I want to talk about first is the design. This is one of the things that garners a lot of attention and it's one that I want to point out immediately. The reason why this new model has a bezel around the display is to reduce backlight bleeding that is a side effect from an IPS panel. This is something that BenQ have done a really amazing engineering job with because if you compare these two display in the dark and just see the backlight bleeding, BenQ have done an amazing job reduce any backlight bleeding on this SW271C, giving you a better display, more color accuracy, and also a better panel overall. There are more technologies in this backlight bleeding reduction, and that is Uniformity version 3, but I'm going to cover later on in my comparison. Now let's talk about the spec for this panel. This is where if we just look at the basic specs, they're very similar to each other. 27 inch, 16 to 9 aspect ratio, matte coating, 4K UHD 3840 by 2160 with 163 pixels per inch pitch. 1000 to 1 contrast ratio, 350 nits maximum brightness. They are both a 10 bit panel Dunvine 8 bit plus FRC. What this means is that majority of the color information is carried over the 8 bit signal with the extra 2-bit done by frame rate control. That means some of the pixels are changing color at different frequency, making us see the extra 2-bit. They're both IPS LED backlight panel with an amazing angle of view. However, with this SW271C, BenQ have improved and reduced backlight bleeding that is a side effect of an IPS LED backlight with the bezel around the display and have done a really good job with that. Now let's talk about the technologies that we generally don't see when we compare them, but they do make a difference in color accuracy. BenQ refer to this as their AccuColor technology. Think of this as hardware, software, and calibration working together in concert to create a more color accurate panel. These are all the technologies that BenQ have included in their SW and PD line displays. With this being an SW display line, both of these have a similar color gamut coverage. Both of them can do 99% Adobe RGB and being a photographer display, do we expect anything less, right? They can both show 100% sRGB. And with this new SW271C, it can also show 90% display P3 and DCI P3. Even though the display P3 and DCI P3 specs is not listed for the SW271, because when this display was released, those are the two color gamuts that wasn't really gaining that much traction as they are today which is the reason why they're not listed. However, I'm sure that they are in the 90% range, very similar to this SW271C as well. And one thing I want to mention is that 
This SW271C has an upgraded, better panel quality than the SW271 that come before it. Being that this is part of the SW display line, you're guaranteed to get a panel with a Delta E less than 2 from the factory. And the promise remains for both of these SW models. You're also going to get an individual calibration report card. And as technology improved throughout the years, the report card for this SW271C is even more thorough than the report card on the SW271. Both of these display are hardware calibration capable, and when you're using Palette Master Element to do a calibration, you're doing all the color adjustment on the display panel itself, giving you better color accuracy and less tonal banding because there are no signal changes coming up from the video card whatsoever. Inside these display, there is a 3D lookup table or what we call a 3D LUT. On the SW271, the 3D LUT is 14-bit. BenQ have gone in an upgrade on the SW271C with a 16-bit 3D LUT, very similar to the SW270C and the SW321C that have come before it. This extra 2-bit in the 3D LUT gives the program more room and more data points to run computation for color correction. Both of these display features BenQ uniformity technology. The SW271 features first-generation uniformity technology, which covers two color gamuts only or color space on this display. That is Adobe RGB and sRGB color mode. Fast forward to the SW271C, BenQ have upgraded this to uniformity version 3. There are a lot of improvements in uniformity, Number one being that it covers all the color mode with the exception of HDR and DICOM. So whatever color mode you choose, and if you run a hardware calibration on this, you're gonna get super color consistency and uniformity throughout the entire panel. This uniformity also means that more of the panel is uniform as well because BenQ have done much more strict calibrations at the factory for this panel. Along with this uniformity version three and the bezel on the display, as I mentioned numerous times in this comparison already, MenQ have done a really good job reducing any backlight bleeding that are coming out from this panel. And you can see that side by side right now in the backlight bleeding comparison that I'm showing you. And lastly, this SW271C also has color consistency technology, which was introduced with the SW321C. This means if you want to buy multiple of these display to use in your setup as a dual or triple display, and you want the greatest color consistency between one panel to the next, this is going to deliver on that promise. Now let's have a look at connectivity. Let's talk about the ports that they have in common first. Both of them have two HDMI 2.0, one full display port 1.4, a USB Type-B so that you can link the display to a computer that does not have USB-C, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, although the display themselves don't have any speaker built in, and also on the side of the display, there are two USB Type-A 3.1 ports and also an SD card reader. On the SW271C, there is also an extra USB port that is known as the service port. This is so that you can do a firmware upgrade in the future should you need it. Beyond that, there is a USB Type-C on both of these displays, but the way how they're implemented are very different. On the very fundamental, they're similar in the sense that they will both carry display signal, the data, and also any audio signal that will come from the computer. The difference comes in the power delivery. On the SW271, it delivers around 15 watts of power, which is not enough to charge any laptop, and it won't charge any laptop. However, on this one, the SW271C, this has been upgraded to a 60 watt power delivery. This is working fine powering my 16 inch MacBook Pro, and if you have an Apple M1 processor, this display will power those laptops without any issues at all. This would also work for PC as well. And one of the anecdotes I want to share with you about USB Type-C is that if you have an Apple computer, you're pretty much set with USB Type-C. If you have an Apple standalone computer, such as the Mac Mini or Mac Pro, in general, you can plug your display into any USB Type-C and it will work on a Mac Pro provided that you are using the Apple video card with the MPX module. What the MPX module is doing is that is routing the display signal and also the IO signal from all the other ports, making them all the same throughout the entire system. This is something different on a PC, especially on a desktop machine. If your video card has a USB Type-C, that's great. However, that USB Type-C will not work as a USB cable or anything like that. That will only carry the display port signal. Again, if you have a USB Type-C on the machine, 
it won't necessarily carry the display signal unless that USB Type-C has a DisplayPort overlay. So if you're running on a PC, double check the specification for the port that you're using before you plug in the display, otherwise it may not work. Another anecdote about the cables that you may want to consider using for USB Type-C is that many of them are USB 2.0 that has a Type-C connection on both ends. What you need to do is look to buy a cable that has a USB Type-C connection on both ends, but they have to be a USB 3.1 or above for it to work carrying display signal and everything. I'll leave some cables link in the description below this video too, so you can check that out. Both of these display are Calman Verify and Pantone Validated, which means they have been tested by an independent body guaranteeing super color accuracies that you're gonna get from these panels. They have all the features in the SW line that we have come to love throughout the years, such as Gamut Dual, that allows you to go in and view your creative work in two color gamuts at the same time, either as a picture-in-picture picture or a picture-by-picture. Picture. It also has all the color modes that we have come accustomed to, such as MBook, that is designed to change the color on the display to match that of an uncalibrated Apple built-in display, such as the one inside a MacBook, MacBook Pro, or an iMac. It also has the advanced black and white mode that turns your screen entirely into black and white, giving you a true black and white preview of what your image would look like. In addition, with the SW271C, BenQ have also gone in and add a color mode called Paper Color Sync. This is a color mode that was introduced with the SW321C, and the point of this Paper Color Sync mode is to give you a preview of your display and to change the display white point so that it matches as close as possible with the paper white point that's coming out from your inkjet printer that you may have in the studio. This is guaranteeing that when you look at your picture before you even send it to print, you can do all the final color adjustment and get a print that comes as close as possible to what you're viewing on your screen, saving time and resources in the long run. When you're using paper color sync, one of the things that I do definitely advise that you do is to get a light source when you're viewing your print with the color temperature that matches closely with what the display white point is, which is a light that has a color temperature of 5,000 to 5,500 Kelvin, depending on the light bulb that you can find. BenQ have also added many Video Pro features to this display. For instance, take HDR. Both of them have support for HDR10. However, the SW271C also added support for Hybrid Log Gamma, HLG, which is a format used widely in broadcasting. So if you need to do color grading for multiple HDR format, this is definitely the display to consider. It also has Y support for SDI to HDMI converter from AJA and also Blackmagic. In fact, most of those devices will work on both of these displays without any issues. However, what really makes this SW271C stand apart from the one that comes before it is the support for refresh rate other than 60 Hertz. And this is native on the panel itself. When we capture a footage that is filmed with a different frame rate, many times when we view it on a 60 hertz display, what we get is jittering from a three to two pull down. This display support refresh rate at 24, 25, and 30p in the following format, 420, 422, and 444, eliminating any jitter that may happen, giving you the best footage possible when you're viewing back your content. Lastly, let's compare the design and ergonomics. Both of these display are the SW line, so they are really sturdy, really great design that works really well. On the stand itself, you still get the grab handle at the very top, which makes it easy to move the display around. That's one of the best exterior design features that I really love about the SW display. They also come with the shading hood right out of the box for both horizontal and vertical orientation. So depending on how you want to use your display, all the pieces are there ready to go. The way how BenQ have designed the shading hood assembly and the way how they snap into display is really great because there are grooves on the side of the display and these two models are using this modern design therefore there's nothing protruding out on the side they're not using magnet or anything like that they're just literally using these plastic locks that goes in and it makes the shading hood really sturdy. They both come with a hotkey puck although the SW271 comes with the generation 1 hotkey puck and the SW271C comes with a second generation hotkey puck and the differences between them is that on the second generation one there's an extra function key. You can certainly go in and custom program the hotkey puck but this does give you an extra function button and also the dial wheel which I do enjoy using. One last thing I want to mention in this comparison is the base for the SW271C is about three inch deeper than the SW271 and all the other SW that have come before it 
This is done to increase stability for the display and also to comply with European regulation standards. There you have it, a comparison between the SW271 and the SW271C. As we found out in this comparison, there are many ways to look at these two display models. If we look at the fundamental panel specification, they're very similar to each other. However, when we dig deeper into the panel itself, the SW271C does have an upgraded, better quality panel than the SW271. It also has better uniformity throughout the panel. It also has many new features. For instance, if you are a photographer and you want to use paper color sync, this is definitely the display to consider. If you do any type of pro video work, I would definitely go with the SW271C. And also for any hybrid photographers and or hybrid shooters out there as well, if you do both photo and video, definitely go for the new model. Now you may wonder if you have a current laptop right now that does not have USB type C, you can probably just go with the SW271 and it will be fine. But let's face it, sooner or later, you're going to upgrade your laptop to a model that has a USB type C, which is pretty much all the laptops that are being sold out there. And if you want the display to have the greatest compatibility moving into the future, then I would definitely look at this one with the SW271C because the USB type C on this model has 60 watt power delivery. That means one singular cable will do pretty much everything for you, freeing up all the other ports on your laptop so you can hook up other peripherals to them. So I hope that you're able to find this comparison helpful in guiding your decision in choosing the best display that best matches with your creative needs and also your workflow. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified, and until next time, in Art We Trust.